We've got more than a week worth of games under our belt now, so it's time to figure out who is worth picking up off a of waiver wire and who isn't. Now, obviously, some of these guys might be available in your league and some won't. Every league is different, but these are the top choices if they are free. When you're getting ready to set those fantasy lineups, don't forget to make your picks on Underdog for MLB. They're going to have pick all season long, every single day for all the matchups. Take the higher or lower on your favorite players and win money while you follow along with the games. If you haven't tried Underdog yet, you can sign up right now. Just make sure to use promo code ENDGAME for your deposit match. Just click the link in the description below or download the Underdog app to get in the action now. Let's start with hitters. And one of the hottest names is a Yankee. That's Oswaldo Cabrera. Goes without saying that, you know, in a week's worth of at-bats, 346 average that's good, but you know, let's not get carried away. Why are we interested in him? He's actually been one of the better Yankees hitting prospects over the last couple of years. Last year, it just didn't happen for him. He actually did get extended run, but only hit 211 and really didn't show off his power that he had shown in the minors. Well, he's already got two jacks, and like I said, he's hitting well. The best thing is you can put him almost anywhere in Yahoo Leagues. He qualifies at second, third, short, and outfield. And this is a situation where it's not really a trial run so much as he's going to have the job at third base because DJ LeMahieu on the IL will be out for a while. It's interesting because they added John Birdie from the Marlins and it seems like they just got him to be a bench player, utility type, you know, some depth there, not to be the starter. They're going to give Cabrera a chance and obviously he's taking advantage of it. The power is legit. He's not going to get you much speed, but again, for somebody who is essentially a corner outfielder in this sense, that's not what you should expect. And it also kind of goes without saying, much like a lot of these guys are off to hot starts, he will cool down eventually, but so far, so good. And the next most added player early in the season is a name that is really kind of a surprise here, Bryce Terang in Milwaukee. Brewers have been mixing and matching in the infield, especially on the left side, and I thought really Joey Ortiz might take advantage. He hasn't been a regular, and Andrew Monastario, he's just kind of a bench player as well. Terang, who did get also extended run last year, didn't do much. He hit 218 last year, but he's off to a good start. But the main thing that should interest you is the fact he's leading the majors in steals with six as of right now. Now, I'll say right now, I don't think Ted will keep up. Yeah, he has speed, but he's not like this year's S3 Ruiz, who clearly won't be S3 Ruiz when he's in the minors. Terang's fast, but I think at some point it will slow down. Look, he's capitalizing. He's obviously off to a hot start with the bat too, hitting seven for his first 16. He's going to have to keep it up because again, the Brewers is just really confusing what they've been doing there. So for now, you need speed, pick him up. What if you need help at batting average? Well, those first two names, yeah, right now those averages look great. I'm not sure how long that will last. I think with Alex Kirilov and his hot start, I think it could sustain itself. Now, Kirilov is a first baseman by trade, but also mainly DHs or plays corner outfielder. The Twins need him because they already have some injuries. And Kirilov is a guy we've been waiting to break out, at least I have, for a couple years. Been a high prospect for them, has had so many injuries over the last couple of years. I just kind of gave up waiting on him to break out, and so of course now he is. He hit safely in his first five games and went four for four the other day. Now you wouldn't think average with him, he's really more of the left-handed slugger type. You expect power, a decent average but it looks like he's finally done a smart thing and has traded out some of his big swings for the fences and tried to sacrifice it for contact. His contact rate is up. He's not pulling the ball as much and not striking out as much. Now again, I say all this with an extremely small sample size, but still, this is a player that I'm gonna buy into because the talent has always been there. He just needs to actually stay on the field. And look, if they're gonna hit him in the top part of that lineup, that's also gonna help him. Now, a player I was high on this draft season was Logan Ohapi, catcher for the Angels. Got Sean Murphy, now he's on IL. You know, the logical thing is just to pivot to Travis Darno, the Braves, because he's been around a while to create offense. But he's not been the guy every day. Interestingly, he's splitting time with Chadwick Tromp, former Giant. So Darno's fantasy value definitely takes a hit. You want somebody who's going to be out there more regularly and still has that upside, especially for power. Look at Ohapi. He doesn't have a home run yet, but 
like Bryce Terang, 7 for 16 to start the season, hitting well. And the Angels are performing surprisingly well, at least compared to expectations. Ohapi does have power. I do feel he can get to the 25 home run range. And this is somebody you can pluck off waivers right now, not owned in more than two thirds of fantasy leagues. I do also have to throw out that Luis Camposano is about the same in terms of rostered rate. I've talked about him enough. You should already know to pick him up if you need a catcher. You're in a deeper league. You still need help. All right, I got you. Let's look for speed with Jose Caballero, who is a Ray this year. He's turning out to be the temporary replacement for Wander Franco. I'm not saying that he's going to come back ever, but, you know, until they have some of their prospects, uh, until Taylor Walls comes back from injury, whatever happens there. But right now, Caballero is the everyday starting shortstop in Tampa. He's got three steals already, and he was caught once, but this is a good sign that he is running. He's got the green light. He's also hitting 316 so far. Now, this is not a player you're going to get much power from, but we have heard that what Tampa's trying to do is kind of unlock some of the power he may have. Not that it's a ton, but still, talked about in the spring, he was starting to pull the ball more. It's a little bit more doubles power right now, but don't be surprised if he does crank out a few home runs along with those steals. If he can hit for average as well, this is a sneaky value in deep leagues. And then with the Pittsburgh Pirates offense being surprisingly good, a player who's been surprisingly effective and has been leading off almost every game, Connor Joe. Now, as I say this, just today, they finally made a move. O'Neill Cruz did go to the top of the order and Connor Joe got moved down the sixth. Joe responded, by hitting a home run and driving in two runs. Now, hitting leadoff was very valuable. Connor Joe with nine runs scored already, and he's been hitting for average as well. But actually moving down might not hurt because it might give him more RBI opportunities. Either way, he's playing every day, and he's hitting at least in the middle of that lineup, which has been surprisingly good. He's shown great plate discipline so far, which is part of the reason he's been the leadoff guy. Five walks, only four strikeouts. This might wind up being one of those players who is sneakily effective despite not being very exciting or ever making many highlights. A lot of people don't even know him. He's kind of a cast off from Colorado, a part-time player. He's become an everyday player and it's working. So the home runs might not be too plentiful. The stolen bases you're not really getting, but runs and RBIs count just as much. All right, now it's time to get to the pitchers and we have to start the guy everybody's talking about, this guy who just threw the first no-hitter of 2024, Ronel Blanco, the Astros. To say this came out of nowhere would be an understatement. Look, unless you happen to be an Astros fan or just really know every single player in the baseball universe, you didn't really know Ronel Blanco until this spring because he was lighting it up in spring training. But even then, how much does that really count for? Well, apparently it matters to him because he carried that on to his very first start of the season, blanking the Blue Jays. Blanco, in what's essentially his first go as a regular starter, barely exceeded rookie status at the end of last year, despite being 30 years old. He has a total of 67 innings pitched in the majors. He did make a few spot starts last year, but honestly, he's only in the rotation because of injuries. So here's the million dollar question. Do we buy into this? Or do we not overreact? Is he worth adding? Of course. But if I do pick him up, I might not start him this next time around because his next start is going to be on the road against the Rangers. Look, even with a couple injuries there, that is a dangerous lineup. And then I hate to be the one to remind you of the harsh reality of regression, but it happens. Take a look at just last year. One of the most recent no-hitters we had was teammate Framber Valdez. Pitch a no-hitter. His very next start, he gave up six runs. It is not at all unusual for a pitcher coming off a dominant start or no hitter even to have a bad start the very next time out. So the bottom line here is add, sure, but proceed with caution and temper expectations. Now, a pitcher I am all in on, I'll just throw all that stuff I just said out. I have high expectations now for Garrett Crochet of the White Sox. He's one of my favorite last round targets in fantasy drafts. And I was all in on him even after one start. You know, it was the Tigers. Let's wait. Let's see. Okay, fine. And then he was even better against the Braves. That's right. The Braves lineup. Look, against the Tigers, six innings, one run given up, five hits. And then he went seven innings against Atlanta, only gave up one run and three hits. 
He already had a dynamic fastball, and now he's adding a cutter, which he used 14% of the time this last start. It's been effective. Everything he's doing is working. He faced an imposing lineup and dominated. Yeah, I'm all in on here. If Crochet is available, go at him now. Now, the player that I've been asked about the most probably in the first week is the rookie for Pittsburgh, Jared Jones. He didn't quite come away with a quality start in his first time out, three earned runs in five and two thirds innings, but he struck out 10. This is a case where I'm also gonna say, proceed with caution, worth a stash, but let's see how he does. In fact, by the time you watch this, he might have already made his second start facing the Orioles. So his first start, good, but now we have to look at the fact that it was against the Marlins who apparently wanna be the worst team in the majors this year. Baltimore's lineup, a little bit better. And again, any rookie, I don't care how high of a prospect they are, they're gonna have their ups and downs. Jones is a player I would say add if you have room to keep him stashed. I don't wanna keep him in my rotation every single week. I'm gonna pick and choose my spots when I start him. Let's get to some closers now. Hottest ad was Jason Foley early on because it looks like he is the Tigers closer. He's already picked up two saves and this isn't too shocking because again, toward the end of last year, he did temporarily take that job. Foley's got a fastball that serves as a sinker, gets close to 99 miles per hour, but he's really not a high strikeout pitcher. At least he wasn't last year. Maybe that'll change, you know, so far five Ks and three innings. He's gonna get you saves. He's got value. That's the bottom line. And Alex Lang, it looks like, is droppable. Foley definitely looking like a strong ad right now, but he's not my favorite waiver wire option in terms of closers, assuming any of them are still out there in your league. My top choice is Abner Uribe of the Brewers, who now has three saves already. Yeah, it's pretty clear he's the guy who's going to replace Devin Williams at least for half the season. And Uribe's fastball, even faster than Foley's. He is only a two-pitch pitcher, sinker, slider. It's all you really need when you only pitch an inning at a time. There's no excuse not to pounce on a Uribe now if he's still out there. And I will say this as well, maybe you already have a good closer or two, maybe you don't feel like you need saves, you still pick up these players because they're gonna have so much value, you can either flip them or one of your other closers. There's so much value in the trade market here. If they're out there, you have to take advantage. And for all those people who were doubting Uribe or thought the Brewers are gonna go a different direction in the ninth inning, Joel Piamps, just gave up four earned runs in a third of an inning, and uh, Trevor McGill is on the IL, so there. And then a less exciting option, but one that could have value nonetheless, is David Robertson for the Rangers. Now, he doesn't have a save yet, but it feels like it's just a matter of time because Jose Leclerc is already struggling. Although Robertson has zero saves as of right now, he also has zero earned runs that he's given up in his first four and two thirds. But this is why they got him in case Leclerc either gets hurt or does what he does sometimes and just looks horrible. Robertson has been around the block since 2008 in the majors, has career 175 saves. This may still wind up being a committee situation, but Robertson looks due for saves and he'll get a share. Even if he winds up ending the year with 15 to 20, that's still something that can help you out. And let's go a little bit deeper for some starters. This may be the last call for Brady Singer in Kansas City. No, he's only had one start so far, at least when I'm saying this, and he looked really good, but again, We've been through this before with Singer. He had a good stretch, then he'll have a bad stretch. Has been so inconsistent. Here's the thing. On Friday, he's scheduled to face the White Sox. That could make a very good opportunity for him to look dominant again. And if he does, everybody will be all over him. Singer is not a guy that will impress with his pure stuff. Doesn't really even strike out a batter per inning. He induces soft contact, tries to get ground balls, that's his deal. And so I'm not buying into the high K rate from his first start. This is why I'm saying this is more like a deep league option here. In AL own leagues, yeah, this is the kind of guy who will eat up innings and probably is owned already in a lot of those, or maybe a 15 team league. You know, in mixed leagues, I don't think he's a must add, even if he looks great again against the White Sox. And then there's Frankie Montes, who was with the Cincinnati Reds this year. Remember, remember Montes back with Oakland in 2021 had his breakout season when he was in his prime at the age of 28. Wound up starting 32 games that year, the first time he'd really be able to go that many innings. 337 ERA, 118 whip, and he was among the top 15 in strikeouts that season. But then he went to the Yankees and just was not good, and then more injuries, and now he's in Cincinnati. He's been largely forgotten. And honestly, going from 
couple years ago in Oakland, now to Cincinnati. That's pretty much the biggest downgrade you can get in terms of park factor for a pitcher. But so far, so good for Montez. He's been effective in his first two starts. Let's kind of proceed with caution here as well. I'll say deeper league, worth picking up, worth streaming. You know that there may be some hiccups down the road. His strikeout stuff isn't what it used to be, but this is still a pitcher who knows how to get by. But I'm encouraged because he did just look good on the road against the Phillies, and that is a good offense. Like with any pitcher, until these stats start to stabilize, we don't want to overreact to ERA and whip because those can change in a hurry. But for now, I'm going to say worth a pickup if you need help. Those are my top waiver wire pickups for this week. If you missed buy low, sell high trade videos, you can check those out right here.